first, my cell phone name is Drew, and I think that's all I need to know about me. So why are you looking at TokenDB? Uh, perhaps it's, it's something that your, your data is growing too fast, or you have a requirement for um, some sort of high volume research, or you have some requirement for you know, cost cutting for making sure that, that your hardware um, will still make it for, for a long time. Right? Or perhaps you just think, think it's shiny. Right? You've read somewhere or you've listened somewhere that you know, all of the features that Toby is uh, advertising is, is shiny and you just want to you know, put it out there and put it on production. But again, you have to evaluate it properly to make sure that it will work for you and not against you. And it's shiny TogoDB features that you might have otherwise read already is about, you know, you have a lot of compression choices, you have fast, you have um, quick, you have some high degree of compression like uh, um, LZMA or, or snapping. <coughs> you are able to do hot schema changes, which is very good. And uh, TokenDB enables that because of its internal working. You might be using a quick fractal change as much as buffer, so you have to do everything in real time. Amortized writes, again, message buffers for TokenDB is fractal free works well so that you can amortize writes more and it can merge writes instead of doing much more random IOs. I'm not gonna talk you know, longer than um, uh, I can because all of this is documented. I just wanna share you know, what, what is important when trying to use token in me. Oh, sorry. Um, longer hardware, hardware write because of the amortized write if you're using SSD or if you're using uh, uh, flash drives, then you know, you, because you're saving all of those IOs, you're um, um, reducing the wear and tear of your um, flash new hardware. And faster replication, there's a feature with TokenDB that you can do um, read-free replication, and it relies on row-based replication and having the slave server read-only. Because with, with row-based replication, you, TokenDB can rely on the full image of, of the binary log event with that, and, and it does not need to read from disk or from memory to uh, apply that event into the row. And there's also multiple clustering indexes, which of course you have to know what you're doing before actually implementing multiple clustering indexes. Uh, you can otherwise you know, just overshoot your compression goal and, and instead of um, saving space, you're actually using much more space than you have planned. But beyond its features, it might also be um, because you need to get past the MongoDB limitations. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, some things like EnoDB has a limit on how far it can compress or how far it can accept writes and things like that. And uh, you are willing to compromise between a few things you lose when moving away from EOMB, um, like its excellent OLTP capabilities, um, mature optimizations, including backup solutions, and uh, and you are bent on evaluating TokenDB. Right. So the first three things that you would like to you would need to focus on when evaluating any technology, or in this case TokenDB, are your queries your overall performance, and uh, the requirements on running TokuDB in production successfully. I believe these things that increase overall performance and requirements um, for both hardware and software are, are you know, the, the very, very basic things before actually touching or even downloading the binaries and then you know, getting your hands dirty with TokuDB. First, um, if when evaluating your queries, I think when, when I was working with, with users, um, the first questions that they would usually ask me is, do they need for rewrites, right? Um, when looking at the queries, it, it's always prudent to ask ourselves, whatever engine you're trying to migrate to, it's always prudent to ask ourselves, do we need to actually rewrite anything, 
right? In many cases, you don't need to. But in TokuDB, there are some cases where if you are looking for that specific feature of the, 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 that is being offered by TokuDB, there are some rewrites that you need. For example, you, when, when you are um, doing optimize or doing um, regular uh, changes on the schema, then there are certain things that you can and you cannot do uh, with TokuDB tables. Grammatical changes, there are. Um, again, if you're targeting specific TokuDB features like optimize or, uh, or when you're adding clustering keys, that, that is most important because if you're using clustering keys, there are different syntaxes when using uh, proponent server or MariaDB because MariaDB uses um, key attributes. In terms of performance, there are, there are actually good and bad trade-offs that you, know, you, you do need to watch out for. First, uh, the bad things are unique key and non-sequential primary keys are very bad, right? When you're um, using unique key, it actually translates into read and um, read from, from either the message buffers or from, from this, and then, uh, and then write, right? So it's, uh, it's an additional um, work for uh, um, for TokuDB. Also, non-sequential PK is not very good because you can it can result on a very bad fragmentation in uh, in memory work workloads. Um, selects also suffer from penalties because in in, in the fractal tree in, in in the internal working of TokuDB trees, um, message buffers are used to you know amortize that right to the lift node, right? And when you do select any row that have messages in that tree, tree then uh, from, from, from the root to the lip, you have to merge all of that. And if you have a very high uh, um, tree, then you, you get that additional overhead of um, reading. Uh, the key good things are amortized writes, as I mentioned earlier. Um, white tables, many indexes, still you have good write performance. In some cases, it's actually comparable to, you know, from having one index and having a thousand indexes or having a thousand rows, um, you'd have the same performance in terms of writes. And read through that replication. There are more, I just wanted, wanted to highlight um, the key things here. Now, um, For a minimum install, it is always required to have transparent huge pages enabled. And uh, I would also recommend you know, choosing um, the number of, of open files for MySQL. For transparent huge pages, because TokuDB is using um, large block sizes of uh, 4MB, it can result to more fragmentation than like when, when you're using UnoDB, so you have to disable trans, uh, transparent huge pages. And um, at the same time, it's because using um, JML, right? Uh, there's a really good blog post from Peter that explains why uh, TokoDB really uh, does not want uh, transparent huge pages. And I think it's the same thing with Redis and, and Couchbase. For the number of open files, TokoDB have some um, specific characteristics when handling um, our descriptors, right? The first thing is, if you have partition tables, when you open that table, all of the partition files are open. And with TokoDB, you have uh, a, a separate file for indexes, a separate file for the primary key, a separate file for a status file that contains information like uh, the max uh, auto increment or uh, the columns and, and things like that. So if you have like a very big partition table and which have a thousand files in it, when you open that, then you'd have a thousand file descriptors open. And if you have a large number of tables of the same size, then you can easily run out of uh, open file descriptors. The other thing about uh, open file descriptors here is when you're, <coughs> when you're having or running a number of concurrent TokuDB uh, bulk loads, it generates temporary uh, files, during my test, I was loading 1 billion rows into a table. It generated like 3,000 
temporary files, although at peak, the only file that the scriptures that were used during this test were about 172. There are certain um, um, logic on how many um, files from this list of temporary files are being used. And I think it comes to merging or uh, in-memory sorting of, of these temporary files before writing them into the TopoDB files. <coughs> For the minimum MySQL configuration, uh, as I mentioned, it's open files limit, is number one. TopoDB FS reserved percent. This is because by default, it uses 5% um, of your file system. And if you have like two terabyte, that means 100 gig. So if you, 100 gig is, a, let's, let's raise that a little more. If you have 10 terabyte, then that's probably 500 gig, right? And when you're running out of disk, TokuDB actually doubles that before you know, halting anything that you can do on your TokuDB tables. So you're wasting a terabyte of disk that, that, that otherwise can be used for something else before you know, affecting your service. So this is something that you need to tune beforehand before running TokuDB, otherwise you need to restart to, to change this. Uh, TokuDB cache size is 50% by default, right? And in some cases, even though you, you have been very prudent on tuning your, um, your memory configuration, TokuDB has this you know, behavior of you know, overshooting your memory consumption anyway. Um, there's a bug open for that, that even though you have set a limited amount of memory for TokuDB cache size, you're still um, consuming double or, or even more than that. And one thing you can do about TokuDB cache size here is to use groups in Linux so that you're actually putting a wall on the actual memory usage of uh, uh, MySQL. TokuDB direct IO on is when you have, or when you want to make sure that uh, your writes are actually getting to disk. But in, in some situations, if you're looking for performance, setting this off is much better. Um, when you're using groups to limit your um, uh, memory usage, uh, and having the OS um, file system cache to cache the, the um, uh, other files of, of the uh, other parts of the TokoDB uh, tables, then it can improve performance um, much more. The last one is binary logs. You have to make sure that binary logs are enabled, especially if you're um, mixing InnoDB and TokoDB transactions. Why? Because when you do that, uh, the two phase uh, TokoDB uses two phase commit, and it uses the binary log to make sure that you know those transactions are in sync. Right, and let me show you just an image. This is when you have binary logs enabled, and this is when you have binary logs disabled. And that is what kind of performance, because when binary logs are disabled, it uses the transaction controller log, and it does a lot of f syncs, and it really trashes your, your IO. So you really would want to have your binary logs enabled. Um, another thing, another benefit of having your binary logs enabled is, uh, taking advantage of binary, loop, binary log group commit. So in some situations, uh, so we can take advantage of that. Okay, and of course, lastly, um, your malloc library should be jmal as a standard. When loading data, um, you don't want alter table in ODB to end with WDB. That would be very slow. You don't also want to import an SQL file to a TopoDB table, that would still be very slow. You'd want a select into out file if you have an existing InnoDB table, table. Select that into out file to a CSV and load that in, back into from out file. That is much, much faster. I tested it on a one billion table. I can do select into out file and load data in six hours. But when, when using alter table, six hours passed and it's like, uh, 25% of progress, and the, the import one, it took, I'm not sure, I, I forgot the graph, but it's more than seven hours at least. Um, backups, there's a backup 
plugin for TokuDB, and it's uh, TokuDB has backup. It can say, you know, this is the backup to of your TokuDB tables, but there are catch to that. There are catches to that. Um, it copies everything. So if you have alien files on your data directory, your temp directory, your log directory, for example, large compressed files that you accidentally kept on those directories, they would also be copied. So if they're larger than your data, <laughs> then you're wasting backup, um, backup disk. Um, it also only recognizes files from these four directories. If you have set them custom aside from the data directory, then it will only recognize files from this. And if you have your binary logs on a different directory, then your binary logs will not be backed up, right? And the binary log backup <coughs> is very important with TokuDB because of uh, recovery. Um, also, when you're using EnoDB, make sure to disable nati native AIL within EnoDB. Otherwise, it can be uh, can cause corruption. Look for the bug on Launchpad, and you'll understand why. If you're using the standard configuration, you know you have everything on a single folder. Uh, use LVM for backup, or my dumper. In that case, I cannot suggest anything more aside from hacking my LVM backup to you know if you have your binary logs on a different server or in a different volume. Um, Last, okay, what to monitor? I think this is the last one, okay. What to monitor? The, again, open file descriptors. If you have a certain limit of open file descriptors, make sure you have it monitored. Um, swapping is very important as well, because again, TokuDB, if you're not limiting, limiting the memory usage in C groups, or uh, your, your data set size is growing too fast, then you have to make sure that you're watching out for swapping because TokuDB is normally an IBAN workload and if you swap and you combine that with an IBAN workload then it's really, really bad. Checkpoint durations. In some situations when when the workload is, is, is very heavy, IO heavy, um, your checkpoint can last for the default of 60 seconds and when that happens, when the next checkpoint runs, it will be stopped and another checkpoint will run. And it'll be just like, you know, trashing your whole island. Some things you can do is like, you know, um, disabling commit sync to reduce the amount of bio or um, reducing the frequency of, uh, or, or uh, uh, reducing the, um, the checkpoint interval, right? From 60 to, um, to something smaller. Yep, uh, those are the basic, th basic things to monitor for TokuDB. Um, of course, on top of the normal MySQL variables that you would otherwise want to watch out for and make sure it, it is healthy. So, questions? Hopefully that was not too fast. <laughs> yes, sir. that I think you just have to watch out for what the, the, the normal things that you would otherwise watch out for in, in when you're you know migrating from server to server or just <coughs> just, just the things that you know you would regularly look at. <coughs> yes. Uh, but for replication you're saying that was not really for memory. Um, and what was the thing why it was faster in replication? Brief free replication? Yep, so it uses the whole image of the binary log event. So it can change and the, 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 it can in include that information on the message buffers without reading from the message buffer from the, from the whole tree. Right, so you have the before and after and it can just use that to, go to, uh, to write a message that can go down to, to, to uh, the lit node. And, and that is enough to have a consistent image of the row. Is this limitation uh, fixed or is it still there? 
It is, it is still in fact, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so for, for the, there's an optimization when you're bulk, bulk loading into uh, TopoDB tables. When it's empty, it, it will be, be very, very fast. But when you have a non-empty table with active transactions, it can be very slow, right? Because when it's empty, TopoDB can exclusively lock the table and you know have, have everything um, dedicated to that process. <coughs> But there's, sorry, there's a, a, a variable called TopoDB prelock empty that even if you have the table empty and you have that disabled, it'll still be slow. So I think the default is enabled and you have to make sure that you know, detect that optimization. Yep. About the fragmentation, it tends to refer to the table naturally when you need it because of fragmentation. What level of, of uh, fragmentation do you still get uh, Um, the the only fragmentation, the, the only real problem in, in terms of fragmentation is when you have too many messages that are not flushed to the weak nodes. Um, if this happens, then you know even selects can can be affected. Um, the way you can do is rebuild the table and have the messages up or optimize the table so have all of those messages merge to the weak nodes. Those are the things that um, I've tried. I'm not really, haven't tried any other options as of now. There's some cleanup tricks in Goldman that yeah. just move the message to the ground. But oh, really? Scattered, then it, it is a problem. 